and friends. Welcome to worship at Central Square Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are a Christian community of people who are reaching out to our neighbors at home and abroad, sharing our faith and our resources. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and we celebrate you. I'm Reverend Beth Stotts and leading worship with me today is our Minister of Music, Julia Scott Carey, our Director of Video Evangelism, Paul Holmes, and our Senior Deacon, Deb Sorgman. Welcome each and every one of you. We are so happy to be in this beloved community together where each of us shares the rich diversity of God's creation. In this Easter tide, this is what we celebrate. We celebrate all that is resurrection, all that is new life, and all that is the beauty found in all of creation. We begin worship each week with announcements. I have a couple announcements to share, and if you have an announcement to share, I invite you forward at this time. Uh, one is that we are having a church sleepover. You'll notice in your insert, we're having another vacation week sleepover this Saturday night into next Sunday. Um, all Central Square uh, church kids and their friends are invited to come. It starts at 6 p.m. We'll, we'll have pizza and games and hide and seek once it gets dark in the church and um, a movie. It'll be a blast. We have a lot of fun. Also on Saturday, April 27th, unless, are you doing this one, Frank? Okay, I'm all set. <laughs> Thanks for the segue. Uh, Carol Chafee, Congregational Engagement Team. Just a reminder to sign up for the soup making event on April 27th. Let the church office know that you'll be joining uh, Frank Chiamataro and myself in the kitchen at uh, 10 a.m. to make some tortellini soup. And um, at that, if you do sign up and you'd like to contribute to the cost of the ingredients, we will take that gladly from you on the, the day of the event. Or if you'd just like to give to the ingredient uh, cost uh, ahead of time, just, just let us know. Uh, and the other thing is um, it's uh, time to... Uh, um, re take care of the lilies from Easter. If you'd like a lily to plant in the ground that will bloom um, next year, you're welcome to take one. Um, they do need to, uh, um, they still look lovely, but they are, they do need to be uh, taken care of. Thank you. I'm Connie Chandler. There is coffee hour this morning downstairs after worship. So come join us for coffee and light refreshments. Nice, thank you. Any other announcements? <clears throat> you have an announcement? Well, I, I just heard things going on April 27th, and I just thought I'd remind everybody there's a town election on that day held right down the street here. <laughs> April 27th, also town election day. I wanted to mention also that um, on the 28th, the, uh, the Bridgewater, uh, Bridgewater Alumni Chorus is singing here. Is that right, Carol? Yes. Okay, so that's the 28th. On the following week, on May 5th, Jubilati uh, Chorale is singing in Brockton. And this afternoon, um, Neponset Choral Society is singing in Foxborough. That's me. So there's a lot of um, community. There are 50 plus people in each of these communities uh, singing. How, how big is your group? Uh, 35. 35, okay. And? About 30. About 30? We have about 50. So there are a lot of people that put a lot of work over the last season from January onward uh, to, pr to present these programs to you, and you really should take advantage of them. That's today, the 28th, and the 5th. Okay, I'd like to invite you to our Ritual of Fellowship. If you're here in person, there are fellowship pads at the end of the pew aisle. If you could please <laughs> sign your name on that so we know that you're here worshiping with us and we can greet each other by name after worship. And also, if you need anything from the office or Reverend Bath or a deacon, you can make a note on that and add your email address if you're not on our Monday email list. And if you're worshiping with us remotely, please give us a thumbs up, a good morning, a like, so we know you're here worshiping with us as well. And you can always send an email to 
to the church office to make sure you're on our Monday email list. All right, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our introit. able and join me in the responsive call to worship. We need your presence on the long road, God, the road between fear and hope, the road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like, like the, the disciples, disciples walking, walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a time of transformation. Let us join our hearts and our voices in our opening prayer. God, for everything there is a time, and time is our most precious commodity. Our clocks are always running from birth to death during times of joy and sorrow, work and play, business and pleasure, speech and silence, tick tock, tick tock. Slow us down, O Holy One, and for now simply remind us that the only thing we need to do is be still before you and know that you are God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we worship you together. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn number 247.
I'm going to be reading our gospel reading today from the Spark Children's Bible, which I feel is a very superior Bible. Um, if you'd like to come forward to see the pictures, you can come forward at this time. Otherwise, I'll just like hold them up and show you. Yeah, come on up. <clears throat> All right, this story today is called The Road to Emmaus. Three days after Jesus died, Cleopas and his friend were slowly walking down the road to Emmaus. They were walking slowly because they felt very sad. Why did Jesus have to die, they wondered. After a while, a stranger began to walk along with them. The stranger was really Jesus, but Cleopas and his friend didn't know it. What are you talking about, the stranger asked. The men looked at each other. Are you the only person in town who doesn't know what just happened? They asked. Then the stranger, what, uh, then they told the stranger what had happened to Jesus. Jesus was a great teacher, Cleopas said. We hoped he was the one God promised would save the world, but instead he died on a cross. We took Jesus' body down and put it in a tomb. This morning our friends went to the tomb, but Jesus' body was gone. They said there was an angel there instead. The angel told our friends Jesus is alive, but... Stop being silly, the stranger said. How many times do you need to hear this? It was God's plan for Jesus to die and become alive again to save the world. By now, they were almost to Emmaus. Cleopas invited the stranger to stay for dinner. During dinner, the stranger picked up a loaf of bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave each man a piece. All of a sudden, Cleopas and his friend recognized the stranger. It was Jesus! But then Jesus disappeared. Cleopas and his friend jumped up, ran from the room, and went to tell the rest of Jesus' disciples that Jesus really was alive. God kept another promise. So I'm going to preach an abbreviated sermon today about that story. I hope you can follow along. If not, there's crayons. <clears throat> Our New Testament reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. May God bless the reading of his word. Now for something just a little different. I'm going to preface what I'm going to sing because it doesn't have anything to do with the road to Emmaus. Um, to talk about where this came from, where this down deep in the sea came from. It came from um, Micah in the Bible. I'll back it up a second. Um, you've probably heard the scripture that says if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all iniquities. We remember that part. That's great. Um, David in his Psalms said, after Bathsheba in the Psalm, he said, my sin is ever before me. John in the wilderness was crying, repent. People don't remember what repent means. It just means turn around. 
in another psalm, David said, um, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he taken our sin from us. Now, if I'm standing here, I'm facing east, and my sin is facing west, it's right there in front of me. But if we both turn around, or if I just turn around, I gotta go all the way around the planet to find my sin again. So it's just a, a matter of remembering after you've confessed your sin, just to turn around and face God. So this song, Down Deep in the Sea, is Micah saying, he will cast our sins into the depths of the sea, which is pretty far away and hard to find again, okay? Um, I want you to guys, if, because we don't have a choir formally this morning, I want you to help me out, okay? Anytime I point at you, you're supposed to sing down deep in the sea, just like this. Where's my note? Down, down deep in the sea. Can you sing that? Down deep in the sea. All right. All right, so you're ready? You're going to sing along with me? Yes. Just when I point at you, don't try to sing what I'm going to sing. All right. My sins have been cast in the depths of the sea. So deep they shall never be brought against me. Down, 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 down in the depths of the sea. The sins of the past are all gone at last. Down in the depth of the sea. My soul is rejoicing, my sins are all gone. I praise the dear Lord who has cast every one. Down, 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 down in the depths of the sea. The sins of the past are all gone at last. From sin's condemnation, I am now released. And all of the dread of the past now is ceased. Down deep in the sea, sorry. Down, 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 down in the depths of the sea. The sins of the past are all gone at last. Down in the depths of the sea. Thank you for helping. So today, our Eastertide journey finds us on the road to Emmaus. It takes place on the day that the disciples hear of Jesus' resurrection. And if you put yourself in their place, you can imagine that they are in the midst of a roller coaster of emotions. Just in the past week, they celebrated Jesus arriving in Jerusalem. They saw him arrested, beaten, and killed. They started to grieve his death, and now they're processing that the tomb is empty. That's the epitome of whiplash of emotion. These two disciples are walking a road to a neighboring town, Emmaus. Biblical scholar Frederick Beekner suggests that maybe they were trying to find an escape. When I think about what they had to endure, I guess it makes sense. When life gets hard, when we're struggling to process what's happened to us, we often want to run away. And who wouldn't want to? The two disciples were processing together what all they had witnessed in recent days when a stranger approached. I know. 
they don't shut down their own conversation. Instead, they share with this stranger their joys over Jesus' message and their confusion over whether he was Israel's redeemer. The disciples welcome this stranger into not only their conversation, but also their lodging. They didn't know it was Jesus. Luke says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Not they failed to recognize him, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. In other words, it wasn't their fault. It wasn't some problem with their eyes or lack of faith. No one's blaming them. But I wonder if maybe grief or disappointment got in their eyes. After all, their hopes in Jesus have been dashed, their expectations left unmet. They'd been so excited about Jesus. They put so much faith in him that when he died, there didn't seem to be anything but to leave, to put it all behind them. Oh, sure, there were some people who said Jesus was alive again, but who could believe talk like that? They hadn't seen him yet. So on they walked, telling the stranger about their problems with Jesus, never suspecting the stranger actually was Jesus. The journey to Emmaus is for the disappointed, for those whose expectations have gone unmet. Surely each of us has walked down that road at some point. It's the road you walk when you don't make a team, or when your candidate loses, or your crush won't talk to you, or your loved one has passed on. But here's the amazing and wonderful promise of the gospel. On your road of loneliness and despair, you are not alone. You may think you're alone. Your eyes may keep you from seeing, but you're not. That one who joins you along the way, the one who hears your disappointment and your heartache, the one you complain to about being let down, yep, that's Jesus. Which means that Jesus may not look like you expect it. No beard or sandals or long hair or piercing eyes. Jesus might look like Connie Chandler as she gives you coffee after worship. Jesus might look like the stranger at the hospital who brings you a tissue when you're crying. Or the coach who offers encouragement when you're about to quit. Or the friend who listens to you as you share your struggles. So why do I call these people Jesus? Because the walk on the road to Emmaus does, and because it's true. If you're looking for the risen Jesus in all his resurrected glory, you may look forever. If you're expecting a voice from heaven or some magic sign, you're probably still looking. And if you're waiting for absolute certainty before you believe, you may wait the rest of your life. But the promise of the gospel is this. When you think you're all alone, you are not. Jesus is the companion along the way. And each of us is the embodiment of Jesus. But here's another thing about Emmaus Road. A lot of times we don't know it's Jesus until later, until after the fact. Cleopas and his friend walk with Jesus for miles. They talk about their faith and their lack of faith. They share a meal, never knowing, never even suspecting who it is. It isn't until Jesus takes the bread, blesses and breaks it and gives it to them that they know who it is. These actions, this bread, they've seen this before, they remember, but no sooner do they recognize him, he vanishes and he's gone. It's only in looking back that they know. Oh, the signs were there all along. Jesus explained the scriptures to them, and their hearts burned within them during their walk. But only in looking back do they put it all together. One of the things I love to do with this story is actually turn it around and look at it from the perspective of Jesus. Think about it. Jesus catches the disciples doing exactly what he taught them to do. They don't know the man is Jesus at first, but they're doing what he taught them. They are telling the story of Jesus, 
and they are welcoming the stranger in their midst. For Jesus, I kind of wonder if it feels like a parent who's taught a child to be kind to others, and then you sneak up on them and they're actually doing it. Jesus had to be proud of them for sharing the message and for welcoming the stranger. Every moment of every day, we have the opportunity to do this as well. We've all been on that road to Emmaus. And on that road, even when you think you're all alone, you're not. There are always companions on the journey. They just may not look like what we think at first. So if you're on the road to Emmaus, the road of doubt and disappointment, take heart, be patient, and keep your eyes open because Jesus is with you. Amen. At this time, we lift up our celebrations, our concerns, our prayer requests, any highs and lows from this week we want to share. Um, when we share in this beloved community, we hold each other, and that is a beautiful thing. So does anybody have anything to share? Um, I just asked for uh, continued prayers for Anne and Philip and I as, as we seek to find the environment where she's safe to live. Um, just continued prayers. This is my prayer. Uh, okay, yeah, this is working. So um, yesterday my friend... Peter's dog died, and I just really want some prayers for Peter and his mom and the rest of their family because um, we really loved Henry, the dog. This is our prayer. My birthday is this week. Yeah, your birthday was this week. Happy birthday, Josephine. Happy All right, anybody else? Okay, I'd also like to draw your attention to the yellow sheet, the mustard seeds prayer list for this week. If you um, 
Have any that you would like to add? You'll notice in the pews we have these mustard colored papers um, and we have a prayer bowl back at the end of the aisle here and you can just put your prayer request in the prayer bowl if you'd like. And if you'd like it to just be a prayer that you'd just like me to hold and you don't want everybody to know about it, you can write that on here as well that it's a private prayer for Reverend Beth. All right, any, anything else? Did I miss anything? All right, let's be in a spirit of meditation and reflection together. Holy God, on this road that we walk together, we ask you to open our eyes and see you in our midst. See you in each other and in all of creation. When we do this, God, soften our hearts that we may see through your eyes that we may see the beautiful creation that you have made, and that we may find the divine, the lovely, and the beautiful, even in that which we struggle. God, we ask for your presence when we grieve. We ask for your guidance when we're lost. When pets die, when family dies, when we are left behind, guide us to you. And may we find all that we have lost in you. God, as we celebrate milestones of life, young birthdays and old age, help us to celebrate all that is mysterious and divine and wonderful in the lifespan, knowing that there is wisdom, great wisdom in all of it. God, on this Sunday of Easter tide, remind us of resurrection. Remind us of the new life that continually flows out of us and out of the world. Help us to see it, to name it, to call others toward it, and to celebrate it. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This is the time in our worship that we call Invitation to Give. We are all on this journey together. We're all on the road to Emmaus. And we have the opportunity to share with everyone that we meet who Jesus is to us and to open their eyes as well as our own. If you would like to support our ministry here at Central Square, we have a Venmo card and Venmo code in the bulletin. If you're here in person, it's also available on our website, and we have offering plates in the back if you can financially support the ministry. We also have sign-up sheets in the back because it's important that we all contribute what we can of um, our our financial contribution, but also our time and our talents. So if you would like to participate um, on Sundays, like reading scripture or greeting people or ushering or any other way that you would like to volunteer, helping with coffee hour, um, anything like that, please uh, look at the sign-up sheets in the back. May you be blessed in your giving. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Holy God, we lay down to you the abundance you have given us. We ask you to multiply it, to give life to your world. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn together, number 249.
beloved, go now in peace and in love, walking this road together, one body of Christ. Amen.